Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. Today we're going to paint one of my favorite paintings. The name of it is Christina's World and it's by Andrew Wyeth. It was painted in 1948. Andrew Wyeth was an American painter. He painted mostly realistic stuff. Um, he was a little bit controversial. He was criticized for neglecting the newest art movements, the expressionist movement, um, and painting stuff that's so realistic and also so sentimental. Um, there are a few. This is this is itself contentious painting of sorts because of its subject. A lot of the paintings that uh, Wyeth made were of two families, and this is the Olsons in Maine. Uh, he was at their house, and he was inspired by. Um, Christina of Christina's world. Her name is Christina Olson or was um, She had a disability that uh, Caused her not to be able to walk and to have uh, motor difficulties With her hands and she used to get around she didn't want to use a wheelchair And so she would get around by crawling through the fields and he saw that from the house and Painted it but at the same time the model for the painting was his wife Betty um, there, there are several issues there, but I, just, I still, I love this painting. Um, also, there's a novel, there's a great novelization of the story of this painting. It's called A Piece of the World by Christina Baker Klein. It came out a few years ago. I read it, um, and it is just, it is fantastic. And I think that book is the main reason that I like this painting so much. So anyway, here are the supplies you need. Um, you need basics uh, a pencil and an eraser to draw to draw it oh and a piece of paper um, I'm using watercolors so I have watercolor paper and watercolors I also have um, a pen we might uh, line it afterward I haven't really decided yet we'll see what it looks like um, but this could be any pen uh, felt tip marker whatever whatever you have a ballpoint pen really we just have to use it as, uh, after the paints dried completely so those are the supplies let's get to the painting part so this isn't a tremendously difficult thing to draw um, the most difficult of course is Christina um, and we're gonna do her with a stick figure kind of like we did um, the wander at the above the fog wander above the sea of fog <clears throat> we're gonna do her like we did um the wanderer above the sea of fog with the stick figure so um the rest of it is pretty easy there are a few things that we're super gonna simplify um mainly her hands hands are notoriously hard to draw and paint uh, and we're just not going to mess with those today. This is stress-free experience. We're not messing with it. Um, we're just going to make the grass thick around there. Uh, that's the major change. Um, we're also just going to add, you know, less less detail than is in this painting because this painting has a ton of detail. So let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is draw, let's see, is draw this land. Okay, and there are some things we're gonna have to erase. The main part that we're gonna have to draw lightly is the um, is the, the stick figure part down here because that's really gonna have to be erased. So up here, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The land goes from about here to about here. So I'm just gonna draw the line. It kind of slopes up, but barely like that, okay? Um, and we'll start with this barn. These are really simple. Uh, we're just doing basics here, so we have, let's see, this is a little to the left of center, but like that, we're going to draw perpendicular lines like this, and we're going to draw a roof like that, okay, Ooh, that is not even. And then it slants down a little bit, but at a completely different angle like that. And then it comes down like that. Okay. And then we're going to add this window up here and whatever this thing is down here. And that's really it 
for this. I'm going to erase this little part right here and clean that up. But that's really it for this barn. Okay. Next up, and really, I mean, okay, I'm adding more detail than planned, but there we go. It kind of comes down below the hill just a little bit. Uh, next, we're going to do the house, and that is taller, and it's, I'll say, here. I'm going to draw the back. This one, and then this one over here is shorter. We have a roof. Uh, that and it comes down like that, right? And this, all of this, if you look at the perspective, it's going toward that way. So everything is slanted down, like the point is somewhere over here, like the actual point of perspective. So this is going to slope down a little bit toward that mythical point. I'm not going to go too far into that. And then this will come down like that. I will erase this bit. Okay, I'll bring this across. It's a little bit lower just to show the roof. Okay, and I mean, that's really the bones of the house part. Uh, I'm going to draw a big front door like that, and then there are little windows like that. There are a lot of windows on this house, and I'm just going to go ahead. Since this part is pretty easy, and the painting of it's going to be very easy up here, I'm going to go ahead and draw all of those in. Just like in the painting, the tops of the windows and the bottoms really should slant in the same general direction as the top of that house. I'm not paying that much attention to it though. Oops. Okay, and on this one, let's see, I'm looking at my reference over here. There are two up here. I was trying to decide if this is a multi-level house or just three stories. It looks like it might just be three stories. There's one here. And one here. And one kind of in between. And one over here. And that's really all the detail I'm going to put on that. Um, you can put like the paint, the individual paints and stuff if you want, but I'm not. Um, next to it is this little shorter house, maybe the kitchen added on. I have no idea what it is. But we have a little line that comes over here. And then we have the peak of this next roof coming up, and it comes down like that. Okay, from there, I'm just going to bring this little shorter roof out like that. Still kind of angled a little bit down. There comes Oliver to help. And thank you. Um, let's see. So this comes down like that. And this comes down like that. And there's the front of it. I'll bring this down and this down and here we have this roof Excuse. coming down like that let's see because it's inside that and then this comes down to show that one is farther back than the others and then there's a door here and a door here and that's all the detail we're going to do for that. Um, next up, from about here, the, at the end of the house, there's this land right here. It really goes about like that and then goes to about here. See that? Yeah. I'm just going to draw a line. It's really interesting perspective right here and just 
bear with it because it's just it's kind of weird and my perspective is a little bit off here's another one this is wider than what we're doing like the the actual painting is wider than the art club version of it so because I'm doing 8 by 10 so um, the perspective is gonna be a little bit weird anyway but it's kind of weird in this painting as it is okay so there's that now we're gonna add some fence posts we're just gonna do lines for those they are not straight like that like that that and these come up above the line and are kind of straight well that one's not okay um I'm gonna skip the extra little um chicken coop maybe I'm not sure what it is I'm gonna skip that one if you want to draw it in you totally can okay and then along here is like the scoop of land is what it looks like to me if I can push the cat aside let's see it goes like this right and it curves back along and goes up here about and that's just like the the freshly cut grass versus the more growing grass and then we have some wagon tracks probably that come come down here like that and then to show they're farther away they are closer together up there and that's it really besides Christina okay so here's how we're gonna approach this we're gonna draw a stick figure and then we're gonna draw around it okay so we decide where her head is. It's not quite in the middle. We're going to draw an oval. If I get the cat hair off, there we go. I'm going to draw an oval. She goes from about there to about there, really. So I'm going to draw an oval here and draw this stuff kind of light because um, you're going to need to erase at least the, um, the, uh, stick figure part okay her shoulders come and I'm gonna draw a line across for her shoulders they come down like that kind of and the only bit of her neck we see is like there her spine looks like it's going down like this and then down kind of like that and her hips are like like that and then her legs come let's see what kind of angle is that that's kind of like that eh, eh. I'm not going for exact because I couldn't do exact if I wanted to and the other one comes under there and all we see is the tip of the foot and it's about here here and that looks like that comes about like that and back over here okay her arm I'll bring this let's see goes about like that and then down right and there's her hand and this other hand comes looks like that or so and there's her other hand this part is the sketchiest <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because it's covered by dress anyway next I'm going to start filling in the shape of Christina here now her hair is pulled back so we're pretty much going to keep this shape except she has it pulled back into like a bun so I'm going to draw kind of a circle oval right there okay and then that fits in where her neck goes and then we're going to soften her shoulders this comes back from there 
in the curve of her back. From her shoulder, it comes down, it comes out a little bit, and then comes down, and her waist is about here. So it comes down there, it goes not that much, back up over her hips, and then to her legs, okay? And this is just the bare outline we are going to uh, or be erasing some here. So here's the sleeve of her dress. Let's see, it comes like that. And then her arms are really, really skinny. So I'm going to make her skinny arms. Let's come straight down. Comes out and straight down okay and there is her hand which is gonna be have a bunch of grass because y'all hands are so hard we're gonna put grass in other places too but the grass is definitely gonna be covering covering hands because hands are so hard okay so here's the other one it'll look a lot less weird once we once we get these in. So I have that. This is going to come. This arm is thin too. And then give kind of the shape of it. Erase most of this. And then there's going to be grass here too. Okay. There will be grass in other places. That's just really the most important part. And from here, we come down. Her waist hits about there and then the curve and then this goes in all right this goes out along her leg and then her leg comes down and hits her shoe and we just kind of see the bottom of her foot I'm just going to draw a general foot shape here Okay, let's see, her dress hits here, so we don't really, not there. So we'll draw a wavy line, and this kind of comes up there. And I'm going to go in and clarify things a little bit and start erasing some, and it'll make a whole lot more sense once a lot of this stuff is erased. Okay, and we can see more of what our problem areas are. Okay, so I'm going to draw in her waist, which comes down like this, and back up like that. And there's the waist of her dress. This comes out and then kind of flattens out there. And then after her waist, we have her hip. That's more smooth. And just going to go up and come back down. I think I made her a little bit too long. Drawing humans is not uh, is no easy feat. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Just goes like that. And then comes down. That. And then is her foot. Okay, this comes up a little ways, but then her dress kicks in. And the other foot is about there. And there, you can see the little top of it a little bit, and then it comes up about there. But all of this is going to be dark. And then the under part of her skirt comes over like that. All that's going to be dark. And it's going to help around here. We're going to make the paint a little bit darker. And that'll 
help with perspective too. It'll help show some depth to this and not just like flat cartoony. Okay. So from here, let's just, let's erase all of these skeleton lines and solidify these lines. There's going to be like some pretty serious grass up in here so we don't have to mess with the folds of that, of that skirt too much. Though I'm going to put one at her knee. Comes down like that. Um, but otherwise, we're going to keep that stuff pretty pretty simplified. Most of this is pretty simplified. And I'm erasing all of this just so I can get at um, the skeleton or the stick figure part, which is not the part that we want. Okay, give her a little neckline on her dress. One arm. Grass. Okay. If you want to try and draw those hands in, go to. Hands are really, really hard. If you've done some practicing on hands, by all means, but it's hands are just they're just hard. Okay, so that's pretty much her. Just clean up your lines and also that's almost it for the drawing I'm gonna draw in some more grass like there's some grass really showing up around here and the main reason I'm doing it is because of this grass down here um, and I'm gonna put in like now remember grass is gonna be bigger the closer it is to you and, and smaller the farther it is away so I'm just going to put some little bits of grass in places just to remind us that since we're going to be doing like a pretty smooth watercolor wash that there is grass here and it's just not smooth. This part I'm leaving smooth because I mean it, it's as smooth as it's going to get. Down here your grass is going to be longer and if you look at the painting uh, Wyeth put a lot of detail into that grass with all those individual little lines. Like, that's a super ton of detail there. That must have taken forever. But I'm just going to put this in kind of willy nilly. Just remember, farther away, smaller the grass gets. And that will do for that. And now I'm just going to go through, this is pretty much it for the drawing. I'm going to go clean it up a little bit and then we'll get to painting. Let's paint. I'm going to start with the sky. I'm just going to get blue and not, not a ton of paint because it's a pretty pale sky. The colors in this painting aren't especially bright. They're pretty darn muted and we're just going to go with that. I think there's the pink of the dress sticking out, but other than that, they're pretty muted colors, which means that we are going to be mixing complements on the color wheel. Uh, if you've done any uh, art clubs with me on uh, lately, anyway, you've probably seen that. This isn't too bad. The way you gray out a color or desaturate it, which is kind of what these colors are in this painting, is you add the color on the opposite of the color wheel from that, okay? So this one, this specific one, I'm just going to water down, but for the rest of them, you'll see. I'm just going to make a pale blue. I'm going to paint this guy. The sky. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and paint the pink dress which I'm just going to do a super duper watered down pink, pinky red. Let's see, so I'm going to get some red, not that red, I'm going to get some pinky red. It's also has some blue in it, but that's okay. I'm going to super duper water this down. 
Mm, too pink. Always test your colors. That should end up okay. Because remember, watercolor dries lighter than it looks like when you put it on the paper. Like this is going to be a little bit lighter than that even. I'm going to draw the pink of the dress, or I'm going to paint the pink of the dress over here. Okay, we're going to be coming back and adding some kind of oh grayish to the bottom of it to show that shadow and that'll help a lot. Let's see. Oops. I need to be more careful about that. Um, next up, let's go with a dark gray and we're going to do the bottom of, I see I forgot a line. I'm going to do the line of her ankle from that shoe, which is just like that or so. But I'm going to go with, well, actually I'll do a light, a light gray and I'm going to get that just by, let's see, let's get this over, just by diluting black a good bit. So this isn't the darkest we're going to go, but it's and I'd say about middle of where we're going to be. Let's see. So there are several shades of gray in here. Put a little more water in that. A little more paint. Let's see. Yeah, that should do. Okay, and with this, I'm going to paint a tiny bit of her shoe right here. Okay the top and then the tiny bit right here and then we're going to paint this building this color I'm just painting over windows and these okay and then let's see this side of this one you see the front is lighter and the roof is darker so that's where I'm getting like this mid-tone gray idea okay and let's see the front of this building and let's see the front of this one okay that's it for this gray now I'm gonna go ahead and get her hair which is I'm just gonna do like it's it's a very very dark brown so let's see I'm gonna add some blue to it yep whatever this is this is it's brown. I'm going to add some blue to it because brown looks, I, I associate brown with, with orange and the opposite of orange on the color wheel is blue and you get brown by adding a little bit of blue to orange and then you add enough blue it'll turn black. So I'm going to get some blue. I'm actually going to use Use primary blue for that. Add some blue. I'm just gonna darken it and gray it out. Let's see. See how that just took the saturation of it right out? We just need it to be more potent. which means less water, more paint. Okay, better, a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint her hair and that is her hair and the bun. Let's see, what shall we do next? That's pretty dry. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the darker black color and I'm just going to get, I think this is, what I'm using is Payne's Gray. This is close enough. And I'm just going to get this really dark. Like I'm just going to go straight from the thing. I'm going to go and I'm going to do the soles of her shoes. Like that. Okay, I'm going to do see this under her dress for shadow, like that, and then let's see, we're going to go ahead and just do, well definitely we're going to do this part, I end up diluting it a little bit for the rest of the roofs, this seems like the darkest part is a shadow right here between these two buildings. Okay, although that wasn't dry all the way, darn it. Okay, and then, oh, and the door. Next, I'm gonna dilute it a little bit, like this is gonna be mostly paint. Let's see. And I'm gonna do the roof, the roofs of the thing with this. I just don't want it, I don't want it quite as dark. Better. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the roofs and the chimneys. Now all this has to dry, then we're going to paint this a lighter gray. Until then, let's go ahead and do this color. Uh, this color down here is just going to be a darker version of that. And to do that, this is a yellow ochre, which is pretty much what I have here, with some brown in it. And to mute it some more, to desaturate it, I'll be adding just a touch of blue. So here's what you do if you don't, if you only have yellow, if you don't have yellow ochre, add a little bit of brown to your yellow ochre. To do what we're doing, add a little bit more brown to that brown uh, yellow. And that's all you need to do. Okay. I'm going to get some brown. I want brown. I don't want black. I just want brown. Okay. Really, I could with mine because my black um, is a very, well, my gray, my paint's gray here. It's a very, very bluey gray. Let's see. So now I'm going to add the touchiest touch of blue. Like, yeah. Well, it's too much, too little of a touchy touch. Oh, that's too much. Okay. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more yellow. Make sure you can see. There we go. That's better. See how that just kind of turned it gray? That's what we want. Okay. I'm going to put some water in it. So I'm going to put a good bit of water in it because this needs to be lighter. We'll have to go back and add more paint in a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. That'll be good. We just need to water it down some. Okay. Switch the biggest brush. It's always better. You'll end up with smoother strokes if you use the biggest brush that you can handle given the, the water coloring circumstances. Um, so always better to use a big brush if you can. A little more water. Oops. It's okay. I'm going to paint all of this area, including the, the tracks here. I'm going to go up to the fence. Okay. Caucasian skin on a, in a painting is kind of hard. We're going to kind of do our best and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some orange and really 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 dilute it okay I'm going to add some of this pink to it I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it I know now we're going to water it down and see what it looks like actually that's not too bad she's pale anyway okay so that's just that's some orange with some pink slash red and some blue Let's see. 
Is that dry? Yeah. And this is dry too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a shadow to that and we're going to do that by adding, let's see, we've got our pink here. We want it more, we want more paint in it, number one. And I'm going to add, let's see, what's across from pink? I'm going to add a little bit of yellowy green, just a wee touch. Where is it? Where to put it? Okay, and we'll see what we get. Yeah, that's it. See, that's a nice shadow. It grayed it out and it darkened it some. Okay, I'm just going to go comes about like that. And then this is all in shadow. I'm just painting right over where I painted before. That helps to darken it too. There we go. There's a shadow. This can come up farther. Oh, we can do, let's see, let's do the shadow of her elbow down like that. Okay. And there we go. Adding, I'll put a little bit up here. Shadow just make gives the painting so much more depth. Okay. So there's that. So like this little stroke where it shows the contour of her back, like uh, here with her shoulder blade, just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now all we have left is this this color and this color and this these two are going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry my painting completely and then we're going to come back and do the rest of it. And I forgot one bit. Um, I forgot the front of this house and so I'm going to paint this bit and then is that dry? Yeah. And then um, I'm going to go back and dry it again or just make sure the whole thing's dry. So I'm just getting some really diluted I'll put it here. Black. Really diluted because this is gonna be the lightest gray. Let's see. A lot of water up in there. That'll do. I'm gonna paint the front of this house this color. If you skip it, it's probably not the end of the world because it's kinda hard to tell anyway once it's dry. Okay, now I'm going to make sure everything is dry because I don't want any of this running into this other color. I don't want my hands running into it either. And then we will get the rest of this grass. Okay, now remember how I said that this was, this was just a darker version of this? It is. So we're going to go back with this color up here and add more paint to it. And that is going to be this yellow, yellow ochre. Add a good bit more. It's brown. It's not a potent brown. Some blue. Or yellow ochre. That was a lot of blue. That's a super potent blue. A brown. Just keep going until you get a color you're happy with. Let's see. And a lot of it. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. Okay. So first, I'm going to go up here with my smaller brush and paint this bit okay, and then I'm going to go in with my bigger brush and paint all this while trying to avoid Christina here. And there's my field. Um, 
I went back and did a second coat to kind of even it out some because I mean one one issue with watercolor is that sometimes it dries like super duper fast and that's what happened here and it was all like super streaky so I was like okay I'm just gonna fix that a little bit okay so now we need to let it dry completely and then Hmm, I'm gonna do a little bit of inking. I'm not gonna do a ton. I don't think I'm gonna do the whole thing, but I'm gonna do the grass so it stands out and I'm gonna do at least her waistline um, because that little belt, that little, you know, that, that black part of her dress really sticks out. Then we'll further evaluate. Okay, that's dry. Make sure before you do any lining, anything with a pen, that your painting is completely, completely dry. Uh, because you don't want things running together and getting all messed up because they will so first I'm going to start with the grass all these little lines I have for the grass um, and uh, then then we'll see okay now really decide if you want to line the whole thing if you only want to line certain parts of it I think I'm going to Go ahead and get these, these fence posts. There's lines strung between them. I certainly can't see it, so I'm not going to do anything about that. But other than that, I think I'm about ready to call this done. You might want to put a little bit of grass up here because it kind of shows at least a shadow. So I'm just going to put the tiniest little bits of grass along this fence row. Remember, grass gets bigger the closer it gets to you. And I mean, just, just keep in mind that there's no reason that if you line part of a painting that you have to line the whole thing. Um, we're just using it here as accents. I know usually we do either, you know, all of it or none of it, but um, I like the way this turned out. And don't forget to sign your painting. I'm going to do that now in the corner. And really, I'm going to call this done. I like how it turned out. I hope you like how yours turned out if you painted along or if you colored along. The traceable, as always, is in the, there's a link in the description. Um, if you painted along, please take a picture and send and, and share it to the library's social media on whatever platform. And we would love to see it and share it. See what you guys are doing with Art Club and with other stuff. We love seeing what you guys do. Okay, gotta peel off this tape. If you have tape around yours, do it very slowly and carefully because you don't want to have made this this awesome painting and then had the paper rip because of the tape. Let's see. Ooh. And there we go. Here is my completed Christina's World by Andrew Wyeth. And I like it. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Join me again next week and we will make more art at Art Club. Bye.